Hey everybody, welcome back Isaac. to Northern Land, please. The Binding of Isaac Andrew with Plus. That's not the right file. This is the right file. 24 wins in a row, going for 25. Ho, 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 ho. Now this is a run. 4Z, EF, PC, XZ. With, um, I mean, that's a great item right there. Just gotta, eh. <laughs> Just gotta be a little careful. Ladies and gentlemen, we're alive. Okay. We even got a spirit heart out of it. Alright, so there's your adrenaline for the day. Are you a tears up? You are the tears up. Okay, I'll take it. Um, a little, little spicy to begin with, but definitely, uh, I mean, the, the run, now that we actually have a spirit heart and did not die on the room full of uh, TNT barrels is actually looking pretty nice, right? <laughs> Damage is okay. Rate of fire is is fine, even though uh, I, it's mostly created by Wiggle Worm, and I would much rather uh, have this rate of fire without having to resort to Wiggle Worm. But let's be honest, you know, when we're talking about uh, you know crack the sky, we're talking about one of the better space bar items in the game from an offensive standpoint. Infestation Two is incredible. You know, if we gotta. If we gotta analyze this run honestly, obvious. Okay, I'm very thankful we didn't get hit there. Obviously, the amount of HP we had at the start of it was not very good, and is still not particularly good. Um, but the actual like items we've got at our disposal are quite nice. So remember that there's a tinted rock there. It's very important. I would just, you know, as tempting as it is to use big fan, especially because we had. Um, Sack daggers so early on yesterday's run, there is a real temptation without a doubt to be like, you know what? You gotta press those flies a little bit more there. Um, there's a real temptation to be like, you know what? We're gonna use uh, an orbital to do so much damage. Not a recommendable position to be in for most rooms, I think, right now. You know, we, we really can't afford to take one hit of contact damage, especially if it's against a champion. Um, this would be awesome. Dude, I, God, I love Crack the Sky early. Basically, is just press the space bar to, to win. Now here, no Krampus. That's ideal. Um, so I think the dream play here is like this, this. Then when we walk back out here, um, we are going to lose uh, Horror Babylon. But, I mean, everything has gotten a lot better. Tons of HP. Much, I mean, more than double our previous damage. This now has become a run that's like, maybe set in stone is a bit of a braggadocious way to say it, but I don't mind uh, braggadociousness, quite frankly. I, I think that it is a, a, a cultural value that is frowned upon for the wrong reasons. If somebody is braggadocious to the... Oh, I just walked on creep, I think. Someone is braggadocious to the point of, um, you know, it being insulting or, you know, they're just self-aggrandizing, then that's one thing. But if somebody is, uh, hey, like, with what we've got on this run, I guarantee a win. Of course, everybody, I think it's built in. You recognize that anything could happen and, you know, mistakes can be made. But I would much rather have that than the alternative. I don't know how many times I've said this over the course of Isaac episodes. Probably, like, you know, at least 200. <laughs> it's another uh, spirit heart there, thankfully. But one of the things I say a lot is, you know, I, I would much rather, in video, be saying something like, you know, if the run looks amazing, I'm going to tell you it looks amazing. I'm not going to be like, oh, you never know. So the time that you hear me, and I'm genuinely, like, anxious about how the, how the run is going, you're going to know it. Because <laughs> I'll tell you. Uh, we'll crack it. We've already invested a lot there, and sadly it didn't work out, but that's okay. It's probably a secret room here. It is indeed. Um, with four bombs remaining. Um, I would probably just move on to the next floor. These floors have been whipping by pretty quick. <clears throat> but I, I, I would much prefer... That's why, like, you know, in the Checkpoint League, when... Uh, you know, Bear was very confident that he was going to beat me or beat Justin. I was like, you know, I actually appreciate it for once. Because what you end up encountering a lot of the time is someone who's so Im uh, so modest as to be almost insulting to the underdog. Everybody likes to position themselves as the underdog. But it's like, you know, if you're coming in and you got all the momentum, it's no longer fair to say you're the underdog. you got to embrace that villain role a little bit. And I was, I was happy he did. 
I was happy he did. Anyway, we're going for win 25 in a row. <clears throat> Almost a full month um, of, of victories here. I think it's fair to say that I have uh, erased... Oh, that's so good, dude. I have erased the last loss from my memory. You know, it, it, it no longer weighs on me. <laughs> I'm no longer writing letters. Dearest Catherine, I write you again from the Isaac Mines. There's been a terrible accident today. I had every availability to pick up a spirit heart but failed. I fear I will not make it through the 30s. Not of my life, but of the streak. For now, I mean, I'm willing to tell you. I got a little spooked at the start of this one. That was really the first scare we've had in, like, memory. <laughs> it depends on your memory, but keep in mind, you know, I'm not saying my, my brain HDD space is worth more. I'm just saying there's faster turnover, you know? Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Press spacebar to win. Take a speed upgrade. I don't really see a reason to keep hanging out here. This is a little disconcerting with its speed right now, but I'm I'm a fan. I'm not going to deny it. Take me to a deal with the devil. I really do feel, and I don't think this is a fault of, um, of, of cognition. You know, I don't think this is an example of the brain necessarily getting worse. I, I do notice, like, in my, uh, oh, uh, you know, in my 30s, I feel less sharp than I did at, like, 17. But I'm telling you, it's a different, it, it, like, we're talking about, like, the difference between when you buy a pair of scissors and when you've been using it for, like, two weeks. And it's a different kind of sharpness. I really feel like as a, uh, like, as a, as a teenager and a, and a kid and a very young adult, your actual, like, processing power is really great, right? It's like a brand new computer out of the box. Um, if you give your brain an operation, I think that's probably when you're at your peak for solving it. You know, as long as the operation is something mechanical, like, hey, you know, recall this or, you know, maybe multiply two numbers together or something like that. I think that's when it's, you know, at its peak. But it's also like a computer right out of the box and then it doesn't have the right programs installed. You know? You, you lack a lot of wisdom. You don't have, uh... You don't have malware bytes yet to figure out, like, when you're getting scammed. You don't even have an internet search history yet. So you can't even look through this and be like, last time I went to this website, they gave me a Trojan horse. It's a, it's a metaphor that I think is sloppy, but does work. <laughs> But uh, I really think the reason I feel like I had a better memory when I was younger is that I had, like, almost nothing going on. You know what I mean? And if you don't know what I mean, basically what, I, what I'm saying is that, you know, as an adult, you, you got... I'm not going to say every adult has more going on in their life than every child in terms of, like, things that warrant remembering. But, like, come on, right? Right? Like, sometimes I, I think my, my brain, oh, why would you put a key in that one? My brain has, has done a really good job of figuring out what information it actually needs to hold and what information is like, don't worry about that, someone will remind you. <laughs> I feel like, as a child, if you asked me what I had for lunch, at any point in the last 30 days, I could tell you. Now I'm trying to run it through in my head. And I'm like, okay, I know what I had for lunch today. I had a tonkatsu sandwich. But that was that's not really fair. That was like less than 20 minutes ago. Um, what did I have for lunch yesterday? I had a protein bar prior to the stream. What did I have for lunch on Wednesday? Oh, man, now we're getting... Oh, jeez. Jeez, Louise. <laughs> I have no memory. On the other hand, I could tell you... All about um, the controversy surrounding William Tecumseh Sherman's uh, plan of total war against the Confederacy uh, in the American Civil War. So, honestly, what information is more valuable? They're both fairly valueless from a practical standpoint, I suppose. Oh, I mean, I'd, even for wait what, I wouldn't do this, but we could at least blow something up. Crack this guy is, is just better. And by the way, I, that was a good example, I think, of avoiding the sunk cost. An item room is going to be better 
than putting a second key into that double key room situation. Man, we never fight carry and queen these days. Uh, pardon me. I would like you to eat the poison bomb, please. Really? Uh, we still got a few left. Let's try it. There we go. Deal? Deal? No deal. That's okay. Um, let's explore a little bit. We, we've been on the on the run for a long time here. We're, Catacombs 2 is done like four minutes ahead of schedule. Definitely wouldn't mind getting some more uh, consumables. I bet. I, I'm putting all my Marbies on this one. I bet we don't blow up the judgment. Let's go. That was huge. Anyway, what's going on? Not, not a whole lot. Well, I mean, like, a whole lot, but normal stuff. Okay, well, I tried. I tried. <clears throat> we had a, an ultrasound today, and everything looks great, which is always exciting to hear, because you're kind of um, flying blind to some extent, right? You're like, everything feels good. Based on what the doctors have told us, everything seems good, but to see it for yourself, that's definitely worth it. Is, uh, is definitely a, a different situation, so it's uh, that was nice, but apart from that, it's been a pretty routine Friday so far. I don't even know, what do we have to do tomorrow? We got something. I actually thought I had already been in here. One sec. Um, I, it's, this is a hot one. I think we want both. But we'd lose Big Fan to get something random. No, you know what? I don't think we want both. I think we just want Spirit of the Night, and then we're willing to throw a little of the HP we would have spent on Sack Altar in order to try to finesse... We don't want to go too deep, and we might already be there. To try to finesse an item out of you. And if you're not going to give it to me, that's fine, but I think the, the chance was worth it. Hold on, I gotta sneeze. <coughs> Thank you, thank you. All right. Um, now with Horror of Babylon, we're in a super good setup. We leveraged a little bit of HP. It was it was a creative play. Hmm. We'll go check this out as well. Yeah, it's getting to the point where you know, we're not really making big plans because uh, you know ne you never know what the day's gonna be like, right? You never know. Might be an active day. Might be a lazy day. We're pretty much. You know, we're not driving the bus. Krang is driving the bus right now. Krang, of course, is the... <laughs> maybe not a, a a great nickname, but the brain creature from uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles who drives around in a robot. Um, you know, I mean, you get the metaphor. It's a pretty self-explanatory one. Um, it's cool. I'm here for it. Game 6, Canucks Blues is tonight. We don't need to talk too much hockey because I know not everybody cares about it. But, you know, pretty stoked. It's always nice. You know, you're in a position with this team. You're really playing with the house's money. You know, even if... I think if we had lost after going up 2-0 in the series, if we'd lost in six games, it would have been pretty disappointing. Um, but if, if the Blues come back and win it in seven, you know... It is what it is. That's hockey. And to some extent, we're just happy to be there right now. To be one of the last two Canadian teams remaining in the Stanley Cup Finals. Which I think everybody predicted, right? With Calgary, Winnipeg, uh, Edmonton, and Toronto. Along with Vancouver and Montreal. Everybody was like, yeah, I think last two Canadian teams. Strongest two Canadian teams this year. Vancouver, Montreal, right? <laughs> if you don't watch hockey, basically, it's like, you know. Montreal was the lowest uh, seeded team coming into the playoffs. There's your... You're like, I get it. Um, this is a tough choice. Like, Wiggle Worm is good for our rate of fire. Maggie's Faith is good for our HP. I think we take Maggie's Faith because we have uh, Goat Head. So I think they're going to synergize nicely with one another. And we'll make sure we save our key to go to the shop this time. Because we, we might want to buy some Spirit Hearts, honestly. But we're in a very strong position. There's no doubt about that. But yeah, it's... Uh, 
It's nice. I, I never would have expected... Well, I, I mean, I, I guess I could have expected, but, like, the, the team is exceeding expectations for sure. I wouldn't have expected to get, like, three weeks minimum of, uh, of playoff hockey in August out of this team. So I, I think that's the, that's the cool part right there. So we bought the stopwatch. We do, we are taking damage now and then, so I think it's it, it's well warranted. I think we'll save the rest of our keys and just get ready to move on here. I also like I I, I am very non-sports superstitious, and I'll tell you I've seen um, thrilling victories. I've I've experienced crushing defeats. I've I've already said many times, you know. Uh, you know, we went to Korea and watched uh, Team Canada lose to Team Germany for the first time in 9,300 years in hockey. You know, we the, the day prior to that, or, or two days prior to that, we also uh, watched Team Canada uh, lose to Team America on the women's side of it as well. So we really, like, you know, we, we witnessed back-to-back -back two pretty... Um, I mean, one of them wasn't crushing. It was more like, you know, they're both good teams. No offense, Team Germany, but um, yeah, get me out of here. But on top of that, I remember, you know, 1998 Olympics being like nine years old. And then, uh, you know, you're, you're looking at Wayne Gretzky, Mario Lemieux, Eric Lindros, Al McKinnis, Thor and Fleury. Like, it's just, you're like, this team can't lose. All of a sudden, you run up against Dominic Hasek. Your team gets knocked out by uh, Team Czech Republic in 1998. It was a crushing defeat. But at the same time, I'll tell you, you know... Witnessed some very uh, great Team Canada games, not in person, but, you know, on TV at the Vancouver 2010 Olympics. So, I, you know, I, I'm at the point with sports where I'm like, you know, you, you, your your jinx doesn't matter. Like, I'm not super... Whenever people are like, don't mention the, sh the fact that he's got a shutout going. I'm like, come on, man. You know how many people are watching this game? There's nothing... It's quarantine, dude. There's nothing else going on unless you're at, like, an illegal house party or something. Um... I mean, statistically speaking, I'm not trying to be like that guy, but statistically speaking, there's like, you know, hundreds of thousands of people watching this right now at the minimum. And then you think that like us in, you know, in your den going like, hey, you know, Demko's got a shutout going right now, huh? You're like, oh, shut up, dude. I don't believe in any jinx. The only jinx I could be persuaded to believe in is a jinx that happens if you give yourself the yips. So if you go like, hey, I'm going to hit a home run this time, people might be like, don't jinx yourself. But in terms of stuff that's happening like super, you know, far away that you have no control over, I'm like, come on. Are you crazy? I just walked over here. So we actually have a great uh, play here, a way to get ourselves out of Boss Rush for the second time in as many videos. And I got to tell you, we are, we are cruising in a huge... We're cruising USA. You ever played Cruisin' USA? Cruisin' USA... And I, I hate that I remember this while we're talking about memory. Cruisin' USA was the third game I purchased... Well, with my parents' money, let's be honest. I was like, eight. But it was the first game... Uh, excuse, let me rephrase. The third game I purchased for... Um, my Nintendo 64. The first game I purchased was Wayne Gretzky's 3D Hockey. This episode's got all sorts of callbacks. The second game was Star Wars Shadows of the Empire, which honestly, I think I dislike a lot more than most of the people watching this. I'll tell you, by the way. So, like, how did I end up... I, I think the game is okay, but I honestly was kind of let down. And this story will let you down even more. Why did I get Star Wars Shadows of the Empire? It was like, you know, I graduated from like fourth grade or whatever. My parents were like, we'll go to Toys R Us. You can choose one game and we'll buy it for you. And I went there with my friend who was like very up on the industry, right? He knew, he knew, he read the magazines. He had a Game Pro subscription or something. And he was like, you should get Super Mario 64. It's beloved across the board. Everybody loves it. It's a classic. You're going to be able to talk about it for years. You might even be able to speedrun it. This is before speedrunning existed, but, you know, in it, you get the idea. It has a legacy. I'm, I'm retconning it a little bit, but it has a huge legacy potential. Um, I went to the store. I had it narrowed down between two games. 
Super Mario 64, and Star Wars Shadows of the Empire. I ended up going with Star Wars Shadows of the Empire, much to my friend's protestations. Why? What was the ultimate factor involved in me going with Shadows of the Empire? It was more expensive. That's right. In, in my third grade, fourth grade brain, I went like, hey, you know, Super Mario 64 is only 80 bucks. Star Wars Shadows of the Empire is like, you know, 110. And that's real, by the way. Game prices in Canada, they were insane back then. Um, we definitely don't need those. And have come down. Um, Shears is great. Oh, dude, we gotta go Eden's Blessing. I know it's not Sinvicta's favorite choice for an Eden run, but I, I like it. I like it a lot. Um, maybe we'll see... We got another room back there. Can we... Oh, no, we have a reroll machine, not a donation machine. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, it's... Oh, the, we can't even go into the room anyway. Uh, it's definitely not a good reason. And, uh, you know what? All I'll say about that is it's a very valuable lesson for me as, as a human being. To be like, you know what? Just because it's more expensive doesn't mean it's better. Now, Star Wars Shadows of the Empire is not a bad... It's not like I said, like, hey, get me, you know... Milo's Astro Lanes. Which is a bowling game that I went on to buy with my own money. I'll, I'll tell you, I owned two bowling games for the Nintendo 64. If you want to talk about, like, nerd status... I owned a, a game called Milo's Astro Lanes. And I owned a game called, like, Brunswick Pro Bowling. Now, Brunswick Pro Bowling was, like, pretty legit. You know, it, it, I mean, it wasn't a sim, but it was, like, real bowling. You could be Norm Duke, for example. Yeah, we'll take that. I mean, we should take something every floor, right? Did we not fight the other boss? Yeah. <laughs> I For a second, my brain was, like... Totally crossed up there. I was like, something doesn't feel right about this. Milo's Astro Lanes was basically like a, a sci fi arcade bowling game that was essentially like, I don't know, like elf bowling released for 60 bucks. Would not recommend. I also, you know, while we're talking, I also owned Chess Master on the Game Boy. I probably paid like 40 bucks Canadian just for the ability to play chess uh, in the car. And I didn't even have like a, a Game Boy uh, Advance SP, right? So like, I had the Advance, don't get me wrong. You know, we were still balling out of control like that. But, you know, when the SP came out, I was like, I'm not paying another, you know, 200 bucks for a light. Even though the SP is like beloved. Even now when I see the SP, it inspires like a feeling of, like the feeling inside of you that's like, I need to have that. Like, it's done some damage on my psyche, I suppose. But I, I didn't even have the backlit Game Boy. So as a result, you know, you, you can't even play it if you're, if you're driving around at night. As a passenger, please. Come on now. Like, the Game Boy catalog... Basically... Was like the first iteration of the App Store. Nobody knew what was going on. Uh, Forty dollars to play chess against the AI? Sure, that makes sense. It wasn't even a particularly robust chess simulation. It was like we have we have ten levels of difficulty. Nowadays, you can get it for free, or for sixty bucks, you can get it with another fifty games in Clubhouse. Come a long way. We've come a long way. I'm trying to remember. Game Boy Advance was a sick console. I'm trying to remember what I had for that. Or a sick handheld, I should say. I definitely, like, I got Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2 for Game Boy Advance, and I was like, this owns. I had Advance Wars 1. Played some Golden Sun, for sure. Oh, dude, you know, it was WarioWare. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The first WarioWare, like, blew my mind. I think it's inspired the, the NLSS. I was like, man, why am I playing all these games where you gotta press a bunch of buttons? You can play all these games where you just, it's it's just like, you know, jump. And you're like, jump and what? And then a big car shaped like a hot dog comes down and you're like, oh, at that, I guess. Now that's a game, dude. 
Whatever happened to WarioWare? Where, when was the most recent WarioWare? It was, it was relatively recent, right? I think I played it. <laughs> was there a Wii U WarioWare? I feel like the number one complaint people always have about WarioWare games is that, you know, the actual amount of content in them is like near zero once you play a game for the first time. And that's definitely true. Come on, come on. Shouldn't be taking us that long to chunk you down. Not that this is a long episode, but still. I mean, at the end of the day, it's the curse of a game where you only have one button. You know what? I love Crack the Sky, but we're going to send it. Uh, we're going to grab that. Oh, we're definitely going to grab that. We're definitely going to grab this. And we're not going to grab the other one because it is good reroll potential. I got to tell you, I'm very blessed with where we're at in Isaac today. I've had a, a busy week. And uh, Isaac, I honestly... I, I consider myself somewhat... Uh, I mean, I do get mad. But a lot of the madness that I experience is like... Um, dramatized for the air. You know what I mean? Like, w when we're in, you know, quiet times, I don't spend a lot of time yelling at my friends. That would just make me kind of a d-hole, you know? But on the air, we kind of understand that there's some kayfabe, at least most of the time. Um, but, uh... Wait, where was I going with that? I've, I've completely forgotten. Oh, no, I consider myself pretty, you know, even-keeled. Even-tempered, if you will. Um, let's use Ansus. Beautiful. But I'll tell you, a good week of Isaac, especially like finishing the week or starting the week, probably has like a 5% effect on my productivity for the rest of the week. If I, if I have a good day with Isaac, well, you know what it is. Like if you have a bad day with Isaac and lose your streak, you're like, well, I don't really want to start another one right now. Maybe I'll take like a couple days off from recording Isaac if I've got that luxury and then just, you know, come back with a clean slate on Monday or something like that. So, so finishing the week off like this feels good, too. For now, thanks for watching. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. If you did, click the like button. It helps out a great deal. Of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. For now, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. See ya!